everybody uh, let me recall one result from the chapter of limit and continuity especially about continuity was a theorem it says uh, that um, if a function f is continuous in certain closed interval a b and f of a and f of b their product is less than zero that means the quantities f of a and f of b these two are of opposite sign if one is positive another should be negative so that their product is a negative quantity then there exists at least one number c where a less than c less than b that means c is an interior point of the interval a b such that f of c is equal to zero got it this is the theorem of bolzano and uh, uh, what for we are uh, discussing this result i already proved this result just uh, i am recalling this result because of the fact that over here um, we shall discuss a very similar result and that is uh, well known as darbock's theorem what is this uh, uh, the statement is very similar it says that let a be a differentiable function hmm let a be a differentiable function uh, in the closed interval a comma b with the property that f dash a multiplied by f dash b this product is less than zero okay in the previous uh, theorem of bolzano we had f of a multiplied by f of b less than zero now over here we have uh, the same kind of property involving the derivatives of the function uh, at the end points a and b so f dash a and f dash b these two are of opposite sign all right these two are of opposite sign then there exists at least one point c where a less than c less than b this, so c is an interior point such that f dash c is equal to zero this is a well known result that is called darbock's theorem and uh, the interior extremum theorem is very similar to uh, the uh, to this theorem okay so let us first uh, prove this result and the proof of this uh, result and the uh, proof of uh, interior uh, extremum theorem uh, both are very similar but over here uh, i have uh, considered two different approaches hmm Uh, to prove these two different uh, results you can follow any of this uh, any one of these two approaches hmm? so let us uh, first uh, prove this uh, theorem the darbox theorem over here it says that we have a function f hmm? we have a uh, function f and uh, it is uh, differentiable in the closed interval ab and f dash a multiplied by f dash b this uh, this product is a negative quantity okay so without any loss of generality we suppose that f dash a is positive and f dash b f dash b is a negative quantity okay it could also be the opposite result that f dash a may be negative and f dash b may be positive it doesn't matter hmm that's why um, if we consider this first case that means uh, if dash a greater than 0 and if dash b less than 0 the another case uh, should be similar the case when if dash a negative and if dash b positive the proof of the theorem would be very similar that's why without any loss of generality hmm, without any loss of generality we suppose that if dash a uh, is positive and if dash b is a negative quantity now you see if dash a is a positive quantity it means that um, it means that uh, this uh, at the point x is equal to a at the point x is equal to a the function should be strictly monotone increasing and if dash b is equal is negative means the function should be strictly decreasing strictly monotone decreasing at the point b at the point a or at the point b means in certain neighborhood of the points a and b the functions should be monotone increasing and decreasing because 
the definition of monotone increasing and monotone decreasing involves minimum two points. Say if a function f is monotone increasing, then we know that uh, that f of a would be greater than f of b if a is greater than b if a is greater than b this is the definition of monotone increasing function similarly if f of a is strictly less than f of b if opposite kind of inequality appears in that case uh, we say that uh, the function is strictly monotone decreasing but you see in the definition of monotone increasing and monotone decreasing uh, function or uh, minimum two points uh, must be involved got it there is no such definition of monotone increasing nature or monotone decreasing nature at a single point like a and uh, b so whenever we say that a function f is monotone increasing at certain point it means we shall have to consider a certain small sufficiently small neighborhood of the fun of the point uh, at which the function is has monotone property that means it may be monotone increasing and monotone decreasing got it so over here as because the function a is monotone increasing at the point a therefore uh, you see the function a is defined within the closed interval a b this kind of closed interval a b this may be a this is the this point may be a this point may be is equal to b so on the left of the point a the function is undefined and on the right of the point b the function is undefined this much is only the domain of definition of the function therefore we can say that uh, the monotone increasing nature of f at the point a would always be related to certain right neighborhood of the point a not to any left neighborhood of the point a got it the monotone increasing nature of the function a must be related to certain right neighborhood of the point a not to the left neighborhood of the point b uh, so of the point a okay that's why over here it is written that um, there exists a right neighborhood of the uh, of this uh, point a and that is written as a comma a plus h in this uh, fashion the open interval at which the function is monotone increasing and similarly on the right uh, for the right end point as because the function is monotone decreasing because of the fact that f dash b is less than 0 so monotone decreasing strictly monotone decreasing means certain left neighborhood of b must exist at which the function is strictly monotone decreasing and we cannot consider any right neighborhood of the function uh, of the point b because of the fact that the function f is undefined outside uh, uh, right to this point b hmm? it is defined only to the left neighborhood of the point b the function is undefined on the on the right neighborhood of the uh, point b got it that's why we uh, then we over here uh, consider the left neighborhood b minus h to b this kind of left neighborhood at which the function is strictly monotone decreasing got it so uh, we have to be very careful about this uh, very uh, small uh, part uh, in, in which uh, we can make uh, mistakes hmm. now over here on the left neighborhood in between a and a plus h if we consider a function uh, if we consider a, a variable x hmm, over here we observe that x is strictly greater than a and the function is uh, strictly increasing in this uh, left neighborhood hmm. therefore we must have as because x is uh, greater than a therefore we must have f of x strictly greater than f of a this is the strict uh, this is the definition of strictly monotone increasing function as because x is greater than a therefore f of x should be strictly greater than f of a okay again uh, 
again you see on the uh, left neighborhood uh, b minus h starting from b minus h to b if we consider any point x uh, in this kind of left neighborhood in this kind of left neighborhood the function is monotone decreasing okay so in this kind of uh, left neighborhood x is less than b less than inequality holds when x is less than b therefore due to the uh, um, due to the monotone decreasing nature opposite kind of inequality uh, in the functional values should appear that means f of x should be strictly greater than over here opposite kind of inequality comes over here hmm? f of x should be strictly greater than f of b got it f of x should be strictly greater than f of b as because x is less than strictly less than b therefore opposite kind of inequality should uh, be true over here f of x should be strictly greater than f of b okay so these two inequalities follow from the monotone increasing and decreasing nature of the function at the points a and b hmm. and we know th uh, that the function is uh, differentiable at the point a b the derivative exists in the in the closed interval a b uh, and as because the derivative exists in a closed interval uh, and there, uh, so we can say that the function is continuous uh, in the closed interval and we know a continuous function defined on a closed interval is a bounded function and uh, bounded means uh, the supremum uh, of the function exists okay supremum of the function exists uh, and uh, we can also prove that there is one point c in between a and b uh, at, uh, uh, yes there is one point c in between a and b such that m becomes m this that means the supremum value becomes is equal to f of c okay so these are the results obtained from the uh, continuous functions okay now these are the results obtained from the continuous functions now you see over here um, we can now say we are actually going to say that uh, this uh, a means uh, the, sup the uh, maximum or the supremum value hmm. over here we are going to prove that the function the derivative of the function if dash our target is to find out at least one point c such that if dash c is equal to zero we are going to show that this c at which we obtain the maximum value or the supremum value hmm, at this point c f dash c would be is equal to zero because we know that when a function uh, has a maximum value this kind of point so when a function has the maximum value the derivative uh, becomes is equal to zero because of the fact that the uh, tangent uh, at the maximum point this tangent is parallel to x axis okay so geometrically we know this results just to, our target is to mathematically show this result that it does c is equal to zero hmm. so that is our target over here okay so now um, let's uh, continue the proof first of all we want to uh, confirm that c is an intermediate point or an interior point in between a and b hmm. you see if by chance c becomes is equal to a hmm, if by chance c becomes is equal to a then you see uh, from this relation number one from this relation number one we have the result that f of x is greater than uh, f of a we have this result f of x is greater than f of a if by chance c becomes is equal to a in that case f of a must be is equal to f of c and that f of c must be is equal to capital m and this capital m is actually the supremum value of the function if uh, throughout the to, uh, throughout this uh, closed interval a b hmm. but uh, from this relation number one you see this relation number one holds for uh, for uh, all x in the right neighborhood of the point a that means we get minimum one point x which is larger than this supremum value m 
that is never possible n being the supremum so this value f of a is the largest value of the function that the function can achieve and that is achieved at the point a so there is no point uh, there is no point x in the interval a comma a plus h there is no point x in this interval in the open interval a comma a plus h which should be greater than the supremum value got it and uh, this is actually a contradiction to the fact that m is the supremum of the function within the interval a b due to this this uh, supremum uh, this is due to this contradiction we can say that uh, if possible we assume that c is equal to a this assumption is a uh, wrong assumption hmm. due to uh, this kind of contradiction we can uh, conclude that this assumption that uh, c is equal to a this assumption is a wrong assumption got it so what would be the correct conclusion the correct conclusion should be that c is not equal to a hmm. and similarly we can prove that c is not equal to b here similarly we can prove that c is not equal to b as because c is not equal to a and c is not equal to b we can now conclude that a less than c less than b okay so we can now say that c is an intermediate point in between a and b all right so this much portion is been proved that c is an intermediate point uh, in between a and b and now at that intermediate point we are going to show that this f dash c is equal to 0 okay and uh, from this uh, portion from the next portion the proof of uh, this darbox theorem and the proof of uh, this uh, the theorem the intermediate uh, max extremum theorem both of these two proof should be uh, similar because uh, the statement of these two uh, theorems are very similar hmm. however over here uh, in this theorem i am i am considering one approach and in that uh, next theorem that i shall uh, consider the intermediate uh, extremum theorem uh, you will find one more approach there so you can follow both of these two approaches Hmm. any one of these approaches sufficient in uh, as far as the exam is concerned at least okay now over here uh, we first suppose that if possible if dash c is greater than 0 if possible we suppose that if dash c is greater than 0 so over here if if dash c is greater than 0 in that case the function a should be monotone increasing at the point c okay it should be monotone increasing at the point c that means there must be certain neighborhood of the point c in which f is strictly monotone increasing we don't need both sided neighborhood in order to prove a contradiction our, our target is to prove a contradiction so that this kind of possibility can be neglected that if the c is greater than zero. the right neighborhood is uh, sufficient to prove the contradiction okay uh, so over here we consider a right neighborhood of the function a hmm. um, and in this uh, in this kind of neighborhood we observe that x is uh, greater than c x is greater than c so as because the function a f is strictly monotone increasing function hmm, strictly monotone increasing function therefore f of x this f of x must be greater than f of c all right as because x is strictly monotone increasing function so f of x must be greater than f of c and what is f of c f of c is equal to the supremum value m that means again we obtain one uh, value of fx which is larger than the supremum value there should not be any uh, value of the function which is larger than the supremum value supremum is the largest value hmm. So this is a contradiction, got it? And uh, due to this contradiction, we can consider that uh, if dash c is equal is greater than zero, this is not possible. That means if dash c can never be 
greater than 0 or in other word you can say that a dash c is not greater than 0 all right now again we uh, uh, suppose that f dash c is less than 0 hmm? if f dash c is less than 0 in that case you see f should be strictly monotone decreasing at the point c okay f should be strictly monotone decreasing at the point c and uh, as because f is strictly monotone decreasing at the point c it means that uh, there should be a neighborhood of the point C in which F is strictly monotone decreasing. Hmm. And over here, we don't need the both sided neighborhood of the point C. Only the left neighborhood of the point C would be sufficient. So we consider a left neighborhood of the point C uh, would be sufficient. This kind of neighborhood would be sufficient to construct a, a contradiction. Hmm. And we consider this kind of neighborhood the left neighborhood and over here x is less than c as because the function is strictly monotone decreasing therefore and x is less than c so f of x should be strictly greater than f of c the opposite kind of inequality must appear related to the functional values okay so we get this result that f of x is strictly greater than f of c and f of c is equal to m so what we again observe we find that if of x is greater than the supremum value m hmm, when x is less than c so this is a contradiction to the fact that m is the supremum uh, of the function fx all right and this contradiction from this contradiction we can uh, conclude that our assumption f dash c greater than is it, uh, our assumption that f dash c less than 0 this assumption is a wrong assumption okay this was our assumption that f dash c uh, less than or is equal uh, less than zero. Hmm. So this is this is a wrong assumption, and um, we can now say that f dash of c is not less than c. So what we have we have proved two results that uh, says that f dash c is greater than is not greater than zero, and second part says that f dash c is not less than zero. So what is the only remaining possibility? The only remaining possibility is that f dash c must be is equal to 0 where a less than c less than b. So this proves the uh, result that f dash c is equal to 0 where a less than c less than b. Hmm? So this completes the proof of this uh, Darbox theorem. So now uh, let's move to the theorem that is uh, called the interior extremum theorem. What is this? You see over here it says that uh, if a function f is differentiable in a certain open interval a b uh, and uh, if a po at a point c in this open interval the function f attains its maximum value or minimum value. Maximum or minimum they are collectively called extremum. That is why um, we have this kind of um, name interior extremum theorem so it may have maximum value it may have minimum value okay on the close interval a b in fact uh, you see uh, the function f is uh, defined on the close interval a b and it is differentiable in the open interval okay so um, please uh, be very careful and uh, the function f is uh, not uh, di differentiable in the open intervals uh, in the endpoints A and uh, B, and that's why, as I uh, discussed in this uh, Darbox theorem, we cannot say that f dash A exists or f dash B exists for uh, interior extremum theorem. Okay, so over here, uh, this uh, inter in this interior extremum theorem, uh, the function the, at the endpoints A and B, the derivative of the functions may not exist at all. However, if this function attains any maximum or minimum value, you see, and the function attains its maximum value or minimum value, uh, we proved uh, this result in Darbox theorem by the properties of continuous function. Okay. Uh, as because the function was totally different, derivable within this uh, closed interval, including the endpoints A and B. 
so we could easily conclude that the function is continuous here within this uh, closed interval but in this theorem well, it is not given that the function is continuous in the total closed interval it is simply given that the function is differentiable in the open interval so as because it is differentiable in the open interval we can say that the function is different uh, function is continuous in the corresponding open interval that means in the interval ab but until and unless uh, we are confirmed that the function is uh, continuous in the closed interval we cannot uh, apply those properties as we applied in this uh, theorem uh, that is actually the bolzano uh, that is actually the darbox theorem okay so these are the differences uh, of these two theorems the darbox theorem and this integer extimum theorem and in order to get some substitutive criteria hmm, so that um, we can ultimately uh, have this kind of uh, supremum value or the maximum value uh, in the conditions of the theorem it is specifically mentioned that the function a attains its maximum value or minimum value uh, within uh, this uh, closed interval ab and c must be an integer point in this in this interval so uh, keeping all these observations in mind uh, mathematicians have proved uh, or included this kind of uh, condition over here hmm. and final conclusion is exactly same the final conclusion is that f dash c should be is equal to 0 ok the final conclusion says that let me uh, draw, a um, draw a picture over here the final conclusion says that even if the function is uh, not uh, continuous hmm, even if the function is not continuous uh, in the closed interval, it may be continuous in the open interval. But if by chance the uh, the function has a supremum value, uh, not supremum, say a maximum value, like this over here, the function has maximum value. The function may be uh, may be continuous in this kind of open intervals at this endpoint A and B. At this endpoints A and B, the function. Uh, may not be continuous at all got it hmm. but over here if the function has any supremum value or uh, sorry if any maximum value or minimum value over here i have drawn a maximum point it says that the fun that the derivative uh, f dash must be is equal to zero or geometrically we can say that uh, the tangent line must be parallel to x axis and this should be the point c this should be a point c got it this kind of at this kind of point c the function uh, should have a derivative that is equal to zero this is the interior extremum theorem okay so let let us uh, prove uh, this theorem the interior extremum theorem i have uh, over here explained the geometric interpretation of this theorem hmm. now in this proof you see it is given that the function a um, is maximum at the point c so what does it mean in a neighborhood of the point c f of x you see let's let's draw this kind of picture say uh, say a straight line is there hmm? and suppose uh, c is this kind of point hmm? at which uh, the function is maximum Hmm. And uh, then uh, you see, we, our target is to show that f dash c is equal to zero. Hmm. And uh, how can we show that f uh, dash c is equal to zero? We are going to uh, use the definition of maximum value. What is the definition of maximum value? The definition of maximum value says that f of in place of x, they have taken y as the variable. Okay. So f of y should be less than or is equal to f of c. Hmm. f of y, any value f of y should be less than or is equal to this maximum value f of c. It says that the function f has a maximum value at the point f of c. Hmm. So f of y uh, must be greater than or is equal to f of uh, sorry must be less than or is equal to f of c. The maximum value means f of y this kind of expression f of y hmm, this kind of result f of y that should always be less than is equal to f of c 
this is actually the maximum value of the function, the right hand side. This is actually this right hand side f of c is the maximum value of the function f. So all the remaining f of y, all the all such f of y must be less than or is equal to this maximum value f of c. And if f of y is less than or is equal to f of c, then we can say that this f this difference f of y minus f of c that should be less than or is equal to zero. Got it? Now first we consider the left points, left hand points uh, of the point of this point C. So over here we consider this kind of point y less than c. Hmm. Now if y is less than c, then y minus c, this y minus c would be a negative quantity. Hmm. And uh, now if we uh, if we divide this in this inequality, if we divide this inequality by this kind of negative quantity y minus c hmm. if we divide this inequality by this kind of negative quantity y minus c in that case this less than is equal to symbol this less than is equal to symbol this less than is equal to symbol will be converted into a greater than is equal to inequality hmm. so finally what we have finally we shall have that f of y minus f of c should be um, divided by y minus uh, y minus c you see there is a printing mistake let me magnify this one in place of c it should be in place of x it should be c okay a printing mistake is there so f of y minus f of c divided by y minus c that should be greater than is equal to zero all right that should be greater than or is equal to 0. Now we take the limit as uh, y tending to c from left hand side. Okay, Because of the fact that y is less than c, so y lies on the left of the point c. Therefore, y should tend to the point c, y should tend to the limit c from the left hand side. So we should write particularly over here y tending to c minus 0 and this uh, expression uh, this f of y minus f of c divided by y minus c this expression is a positive quantity therefore its limit okay this limit should also be a positive quantity okay and what is this this is actually our uh, this should be actually our left derivative f dash c minus 0 hmm. uh, as because the function a is differentiable therefore we can say that this left derivative and at the point c and the right derivative at the point c both of these two derivatives must be equal and this common value should be designated as f dash c got it that's why uh, over here it is written that f dash c is equal to limit y tending to c uh, minus 0 f of y minus f of c divided by y minus c this should be greater than or is equal to 0. So what we observe we observe that f dash c is greater than is equal to 0. Okay. Now again we already have this type of result that f of y minus f of c is less than is equal to 0. Let me make it a little clear. Hmm. We already have this type of result that uh, f of y minus f of c is uh, less than is equal to 0. Hmm. We uh, firstly took this kind of point y less than c. Hmm. Now we are going to take uh, the points uh, on the right of the point C. That means we are taking y greater than C so that uh, y minus C is positive. Now as because y minus C is positive, so dividing this, this kind of inequality by y minus C, the ratio of f of y minus f of C divided by y minus C, this ratio should be less than is equal to 0. You see, over here there is one more printing mistake just similar to the previous one in place of x it should be c got it so we have the result that f of y minus f of c 
divided by y minus c this uh, this uh, ratio should be less than or is equal to 0 hmm. now again if we take the limit uh, y tending to c from the right side why from from the right side because over here y is greater than c therefore we should take the limit y tending to c plus 0 okay and that should be actually our right limit that should be a dash at the point c plus 0 that should be the right limit and we know that uh, as because the function is differentiable therefore this uh, left limit and right limit at the point c the derivative of the function uh, the left derivative and right derivative of the function f at the point c both of these two left and right derivative must be same okay both of these two left and right derivative must be same and that common value should be designated by f dash c therefore we can say that this f dash c exists and what is this this is actually uh, c plus 0 hmm, y tending to c plus 0 and as because this inequality this uh, numerator this expression this expression is a negative quantity now less than is equal to 0 therefore we can say that the limit should also be less than is equal to 0 okay so what we observe over here we previously had a result that f dash c is greater than is equal to 0 now we have this result that f dash c is less than is equal to 0 both of these two results are simultaneously true this is possible only when f dash c is equal to 0 okay so this is the um, condition this is the result uh, or the um, that that we wanted to prove hmm? so over here we prove that if dash c is equal to 0 clear so in this way we can prove that if dash c is equal to 0 i am keeping uh, the corresponding proof when the function would be minimum for your homework over here we have we have considered the function f uh, has a maximum at the point c so um, i am keeping the corresponding result suppose in uh, this uh, statement if uh, specifically uh, we uh, write minimum hmm, in place of maximum if we do, do not say that the function is maximum at this point hmm, rather if we specifically mention over here the function has a minimum at this point then please try to construct the corresponding proof i am keeping this proof as a homework for you over here this function is taken as a uh, uh, at the point c the function is taken as a maximum value okay and i am keeping this one as a homework for you whenever the function f has a minimum value at the point c hopefully uh, you can um, prove this result this uh, this theorem this uh, corresponding proof would be helpful to prove the corresponding uh, similar uh, result for uh, minimum value at the point c all right and the last theorem the last theorem uh, for uh, today's lecture uh, that i am going to discuss over here the last theorem says the intermediate value property uh, for differentiable functions what is intermediate value property we discussed intermediate value property in case of uh, continuous functions okay and over here uh, the statement is very similar to the statement of intermediate value property in case of uh, continuous functions what does it say it says that if a function is differentiable in uh, in a um, in this kind of uh, closed interval and if f dash a is not equal to f dash b hmm, these two are not equal to 0 and mu is any number in between these two values f dash a and f dash b we don't know which one is the largest and which one is the smaller i mean out of f dash a and f dash b among these two which one is the larger and which one is the smaller that we don't know but whatever be the case hmm, we uh, suppose that mu is a number in between these two quantities f dash a and f dash b all right then we are going to show 
that uh, there exists at least one point C in the closed interval A comma B such that if dash C becomes is equal to this value mu. Okay. We are going to show that there exists at least one point C in the uh, closed interval A comma B such that if dash C is equal to mu. That means this intermediate value in between if dash A and if dash B, this mu is actually the intermediate value. Okay, that's why this theorem is called intermediate value theorem. This intermediate value must be is equal to the value of the derivative of the function at certain interior uh, at certain point C in between uh, A and B. Okay, at certain point C in between A and B, this uh, if dash C must be is equal to this kind of intermediate value. Whatever intermediate value you want to consider, hmm, this f dash c must be is equal to that corresponding intermediate value. C, so this uh, value, this uh, point c will be adjusted accordingly so that f dash c becomes is equal to mu. The proof is very easy, damn easy proof. Directly we can apply the Darbuck's theorem. How to uh, prove this result over here? We are given that the function has derivative uh, uh, within this uh, closed interval a, b, and uh, f of f dash a is not equal to f dash b. Hmm? It is given that, and mu is a number in between uh, in between f dash a and f dash b. We construct a function phi. Hmm? We construct a function phi in this fashion: phi x is equal to f of x uh, f of x minus mu into x phi x is equal to f of x minus mu into x. In that case, what would be the right hand side? You see, it is given that the function f is, uh, has derivative, it is derivable in the uh, closed interval a, b. And you see mu into x, this second term is also differentiable or derivable with respect to x. So altogether we can say that this right hand side, this right hand side quantity, this right hand side quantity, this right hand side is a differentiable function and so we can say that this function phi in this way defined in this fashion this function phi should also be differentiable and what would be the derivative the phi dash x must be is equal to f dash x minus mu okay phi dash x must be is equal to f dash x minus mu now you see out of these two quantities out of these two quantities f dash a and f dash b uh, you see uh, f dash a may be less than f dash b or opposite uh, kind of inequality may also appear f dash a may be greater than f dash b okay but without any loss of generality we suppose that f dash a is less than zero the same kind of uh, proof uh, can be um, possible it is also possible to prove the result if f dash a is greater than f dash b hmm. so without any loss of generative we suppose that f dash a is uh, strictly less than f dash b and uh, as because mu is a number in between uh, these two quantities therefore we can say that uh, f dash a is less than or is equal to mu and mu is less than is equal to f dash b okay now you see three different cases may appear. It may so happen that if, uh, if dash a becomes is equal to mu, okay, uh, because over here equality uh, may come in this case if by chance equality appears. Hmm. In that case, we can say that yes, we get a number uh, c is equal to a. In this case, this a must be is equal to c. Hmm. This uh, c becomes is equal to a. Therefore, you can say that c uh, for if dash a we get a number such that uh, a, um, we get a number such that if dash a becomes is equal to mu. Hmm. So for c is equal to a, uh, we can say that if dash uh, a is equal to mu. So uh, c would be the would have the value equal to small a. Again, it may so happen that if dash b is equal to mu, in that case we can say that c is the um, number b c becomes is equal to b all right so in the third case the third case is that f dash a would be less than strictly less than mu and mu would be strictly less than f dash b all right 
f dash a would be strictly less than mu and mu would be strictly less than f dash b okay so now we suppose that uh, this result f dash a is strictly less than mu and mu is strictly less than uh, f dash b and uh, for this third case we are going to find a number c small c such that this uh, f dash c becomes is equal to mu okay we are going to find a number small c such that this f dash c becomes is equal to mu now you see over here the function f is a differentiable function hmm. now uh, as because f is differentiable if we put uh, x is equal to uh, x is equal to small a in this relation we observe that phi dash a would be is equal to f dash a minus mu now as because mu is greater than f dash a there, uh, therefore we can say that this f dash a minus mu this should be strictly less than 0 hmm. as because mu is this mu is greater than f dash a therefore we can say that f dash a minus mu this value should be strictly less than 0 all right again we have the result that uh, mu is strictly less than f dash b therefore from that result uh, we can uh, we can now put x is equal to um, x is equal to b in this relation x is equal to b in this relation so that we will get that phi dash b is equal to f dash b minus mu and as because f dash b is uh, greater than mu therefore this difference f dash b minus mu should be greater than 0 hmm? f dash b minus mu should be greater than strictly greater than 0 so what we get we finally get that if phi dash a phi is a differentiable function and phi dash a is less than 0 and phi dash b is greater than 0 okay so we can now apply the darbox theorem we can now apply the darbox theorem on this function phi and we can say that there is a point c such that phi dash c becomes is equal to 0 hmm. as per the darbox theorem there must exist a point C in between A and B such that uh, phi dash C becomes is equal to 0. Okay. So if we put uh, phi dash C, what is phi dash C? Phi dash C should be is equal to f dash C minus mu. And if by chance this becomes is equal to 0, in that case phi dash C must be is equal to mu. Okay. So in this way we proved that there exists at least one point C in between A and B such that phi dash C becomes is equal to 0. Uh, sorry, phi dash C becomes is equal to mu. Okay, phi dash C becomes is equal to mu. So in this way, we can prove that uh, the function if um, whatever be the um, value of mu, the, there exists at least one point C such that if dash C becomes is equal to mu and that's uh, completes the proof of um, intermediate value property of the differentiable functions so over here what we observe that um, the the darbox theorem and the at first uh, we introduced a theorem in case of continuous function that is actually uh, this uh, theorem the con in case of continuous function uh, this uh, theorem of Bolzano so the Darbox theorem and the theorem of Bolzano, both of these two theorems are very similar and they share same kind of property. And not only that, we again had a similar result that is actually an intermediate value property for continuous function. So this intermediate value property of continuous function is also shared by continuous function as well as for uh, differentiable functions. So the, both of these two properties are true for continuous functions as well as for differentiable functions.